Live from the Civic Media World Headquarters in Madison, Wisconsin, it's the Todd Alba Show. And now, pursuing truth wherever it may lead, here's your host, Todd Alba. Across Wisconsin on the Civic Media Radio Network and streaming worldwide on the Civic Media app. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Todd Alba, along with our producer and engineer, Mr. Aaron Zommers, on the board. It is Thursday, February 1st, 2024, six minutes past the hour of 12 noon. A happy Thursday to everyone. Overcast skies here high atop State Street. A block off the Capitol Square in downtown Madison, Mr. Zomers, uh Somebody observed on the on the stream before we got going here because we stream slightly earlier than we go on the air over the over the broadcast airwaves. Uh, they said, "Well, Todd's wearing a little dressed up today. Has a sweater and a collared shirt on. Well, my flannels are collared, but yes, I'm uh, immediately after the show." I am making a rare appearance back at the Wisconsin State Capitol, somewhere where I worked for several years. It's a beautiful building, but I'm going up to uh, up to the Capitol and speaking to a group of folks uh, who are are there lobbying. It's a big lobby day, and we have been invited to Civic Media, and so I'm going to represent the company. So I have to look a little little dressed up. Get a little spiffy. (laughs) Get a little spiffy. I clean up fairly well, as they say. So uh, yeah, as soon as the show is over, I'm going up to the Capitol and and uh, we are we're talking about civic media to folks today. I'm talking about the new the app, not so new but improved. Handing out some brochures. We have some sexy brochures. Yes, very very swanky. Full color. Full color. That's right. I am not on the brochure, thank goodness. But uh, yeah, it shows a map of all of our stations, up to twenty stations and growing now across the civic media. Ready to work? How are you today, sir? I'm doing well, you know, um, nothing too crazy, just another day, but the first day of February. You have one of my favorite shirts on that you wear, uh, Cage the Elephant, which to me looks like, as I'm old, looks like Bozo the Clown from WGN. No, that's not entirely <laughs> inaccurate. I mean, I always pictured it as more of kind of an impressionistic painting kind of thing. Yes. Where it's a face that's just all jumbled up. It's a better, that's probably a better take on it. But the hair, the blue hair that sticks out like that. Kind of what the bozo. Oh, that's just stripes behind it. Oh, see, to me, it looks like the hair. That's fair. Um, See, it's it's the album cover of Melophobia, their third (laughs) album. And on the album cover, those stripes are black and clearly in the background. Mm. On the shirt, they're blue. So I see I see why it looks like hair. And now that I look at it in that way, yeah, Yeah. it does look like a weird clown. And of course, I'm without basically I've lost my hair, and so I'm jealous of anybody with hair, including Bozo the clown. (laughs) Anyway, I. I had a I, look. Here's what is coming up on the show today. One of our favorite guests is coming back on the show. It's been a while. He's been busy with the holidays, and he is carving out time in hour number two at one thirty. Uh, John Roach. He is a writer, a screenplay writer, a Renaissance man, an entrepreneur, a sports dude, an all around great guy. John Roach. I've said this before. My one of my deans at UW Richland, Dion Kempthorne. A great guy. And Dion is a huge uh, fan of Mark Twain. And I had him for a class. For Mark of, Twain? <laughs> no, Dion Kempthorne. <laughs> but he's Dion Kempthorne, uh, former professor and dean at UW Richland, is one of those people where you could listen to him read a phone book and it would be entertaining because of the sm- his voice is smooth like butter. He always has an insightful, pithy, interesting story. And to me, John Roach is one of those other people like Dion Kempthorne, who just has the voice you can listen to with a glass of brandy or a cup of coffee or whatever your beverage is and sit there and listen. So John Roach is going to be stopping by. We're going to get his take on all this Swifty versus old white guy madness that's going on continues. We talk, we had a whole show on it yesterday, but we'll, we'll get his take on that. But we're also going to move on and talk a little bit about uh, Wisconsin basketball. Have a big game tonight down in Nebraska. And then, of course, coming up this weekend, they will take on Purdue. So John will give us his take on that. And also just whatever else is on his mind. Again, he's one of those kind of people, and I think we all have them in our life, where you can bump into him at Walmart or the grocery store or the coffee clutch and say, John, how you doing? Next thing you know, two hours later. Exactly right. And you're thoroughly entertained. The man is intelligent. He always has a great take. So John Roach will be coming up uh, at 1.30. Also, my former party, 
The Republicans, the RNC, Republican National Committee, under the leadership or misleadership of Rona McDaniel, I almost said the other name she doesn't like, Romney. She dropped it after Mitch became less popular. When Mitch was running for president, she always went by Rona Romney McDaniel because it's like her uncle or something. But then when Mitch became in Republican circles, Trump circles a rhino, Republican in name only, she dropped the Romney part. So she goes by Rona McDaniel now. And and anyway, under her leadership, they have continued to lose money, and yet they continue to put her in charge. The new receipts are out. Republican Party National Committee is down to one of its lowest balances ever. The party is running out of money. And look, as someone who is a former Republican, our friends listening at WAUK in Waukesha and in Milwaukee, here's what happens on these things like the Republican National Committee. They say, oh, we're going to have our, our national convention in Milwaukee. Everybody says, this is fantastic. And, you know, normally speaking, it is because it gets the city a lot of press. The, the, the media comes in there. They tell people how great Milwaukee is. I'm all for that. But if you are a small business owner in Milwaukee, and this is t- serious, make sure you get paid up front for any services you are going to contract with Republican National Committee. Because here's what happens. They come in and say, oh, we're, having, we're the Republican National Committee. Just put it on our bill. I'll just charge it. And we'll just send us a receipt. It will be weeks, if not months, if ever, before you get paid. So make sure you get a credit card and run that son of a gun or get paid up front before you accept anything for the Republican National Committee, any work they want you to do. Now, other outside third-party vendors, you know, probably fine. But if you're dealing with the party or the Trump campaign, assuming that the nominee is going to be Trump, get paid up front. I'll more on that a little bit later. That's, that's where we are going to start. But like all of you, I love listening to our great news team here at Civic Media. Terry Bell, our news director, had a, a story just before we came on the air. I said, Zomers, pull that up. And of course, he is fantastic. And he did. Governor Tony Evers has finally commented on what's happening to the University of Wisconsin system and the closure. We are now at four, Richland, Washington County, Fond du Lac, and Marinette, campuses that are either totally closed or will be soon. And today, apparently, Governor Evers finally had something to say on it. This is what he said. Oh, boy, Mr. Education, something to say about the closing schools. I wonder what it is. I anticipate there will be more two-year campuses uh, uh, closed down. It's going to be painful, though. I, and I think Jay and the Board of Regents are doing the best job possible. Okay, a couple of things here. The governor of the state of Wisconsin, as Mr. Zomers noted, three times elected the state school superintendent of the state, is now saying on the record that more two-year campuses are going to be closed in this state. And other than saying it's going to be tough, he goes on to pour salt into the wound by saying that Jay Rothman, in my opinion, the incompetent president of the University of Wisconsin system and the border regions are doing a good job handling it. Well, he specifically I, said the best they can. Well, the best they can. And in, well, in that, I, he I guess may maybe, be correct. I, maybe, maybe, you're right. Maybe that's fair. The best they can, which isn't very damn good. I, I'm a little shook by this, quite frankly, because we have, we have, we have, by the way, we invited Mr. Zomer, sent an official request through his office. We've invited the governor to come on this show, Governor Evers, to talk about this specifically. We have not heard back, right? Correct. To date, we have not heard back. I have been to campuses. We did a we did a three hour show from UW Richland a year ago, over a year ago. We had the dean of the UW Stevens Point at Wausau campus on in Marshfield last week. Wonderful person, by the way, and we appreciate her coming on. And look, we didn't we didn't talk a lot about the closures because that's beyond her scope. We wanted to uplift the two year campus at Wausau and Marshfield. But the fact that Jay Rothman continues to not hold open town hall meetings in communities 
where he is closing campuses is atrocious to me. These are public universities with public money. And this line about, well, enrollment keeps falling. They don't tell you the flip side of the 45 record. I know a lot of people won't get that reference. (laughs) The flip side is that the legislature is not funding the University of Wisconsin system and there's terrible leadership at the top, therefore recruitment levels and actual studies of how to adapt while keeping campuses open and still be profitable is not happening. Case in point, Richland Center. They, the, the person who did the recruitment retired. They were not allowed to rehire that position. The local foundation who had $600,000 in private money said, we will hire a recruiter. And UW Platteville and Jay Rothman at System said no. And we have never gotten a reason why. And then they say, well, geez, recruitment's gone down. You have to tell the entire story if you're going to talk about recruitment numbers. 844-967-2789. Let's go quickly to on the phones. Mark calling in from Prayer to Sack. Mark, what say you? Yeah, it's a shame that they're closing down these two-year campuses. They should actually be expanding the program to expand you know, the needs for our workforces in the future. I mean, I was thinking about this, that... Um, and maybe you know, we've, we've gone back to, and I don't know what the status is now for like kids back in grade school. Maybe they don't do them anymore. But I can remember, and I had shop class all, all three years, so seventh, eighth, and ninth grade when I was in uh, junior high is what they had it structured back then. Sure. I mean, and actually in ninth grade, we had the opportunity to cast aluminum. That uh, it was just, and it's just a shame that they're, but, and they talk about the growing needs of our workforce. I mean, either they have to ex- expand the, uh, technical expertise are offering education in high schools, but then expand the two-year campuses and actually fund them. I mean, it's a bloody shame when we've got $4 billion sitting in the coffers as a surplus that we're closing down any of these campuses at all. Yeah. And to start making industry pay for the education that they're, they need to have, they need to have workers well, then they have to, then they have to start funding the system that, that provides them with those workers. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Mark, thanks so much. Up against the clock here. When we come back, more on this. Tony Evers thinks that Jay Rothman at System and the Regents are doing as best they can. Well, they need to do better or get rid of them. And where is the democratic outrage? Back with more after this on the other side. It's the Todd Ball Show on the Civic Media Radio Network. Welcome back to the Town Hall Show on the Civic Media Radio Network, 20 past after the hour of 12 noon. Best you can, is that what they're saying there, Mr. Zobbers? Yeah, you can try the best you can. The best you can is good enough. But if you listen to the tone of the song, I don't think they believe it. No. Governor Tony Evers, we just had this with our crack news staff here at Civic Media, getting the quote from the governor, either last night or this morning, I'm not sure which, saying that he thinks that Jay Rothman and the Board of Regents are doing the best they can with higher education, and he himself is now on the record. The governor of Wisconsin is on the record as saying there will be more closures of two-year campuses across the state to add to Richland, Washington County, Fond du Lac, and Marinette. And again, I, I only say this not to be braggadocious, but to drive home the point I wasn't just saying stuff for ratings or to be over the top a year ago last November we were in Richland Center doing a three-hour show on the they called it suspension of classes at Richland campus we're going to close it just the suspension of classes and we had on Kathy Sandine the, the, the last person to serve as dean of the UW Colleges, which is what the two years used to be called when they were independent. She also oversaw UW Extension. Think of the necessity and the work that Extension offices do all over the state. And she said when she was dean or when she was a, a chancellor of the colleges, she had put together a plan to recognize 
that higher education was changing, that enrollments in some cases were going down, and that the system needed to adapt. Consolidation at some point, some online classes, but she put it all together, had a marketing plan, and she was not going to close one single two-year campus. And the president at the time, Ray Cross, canned it, wouldn't let it see the light of day. A few months later, his plan came out, which we found out was no plan at all. His plan was to throw them all together, put the two years back under the four years. He literally told the four-year chancellors, you're either going to sink or swim. That was the plan. And that is why enrollments have continued to fall. And no one seems to have the courage to talk about this or to ask this question. And look, I'm a Tony Evers supporter. I'm glad he's the governor because we'd be Texas and Florida without him politically. But I'm disappointed in Tony Evers on this. There's something going on that the education governor is supporting these closures and seems to have almost no compassion, seems to have no plan. And then you have Republicans like Howard Markline, whose own district included the Richland campus. He's in charge of the money, the budget, the Joint Finance Committee. As Mark pointed out, there is a $4 billion surplus in the state. And no one wants to talk about why we're not recruiting people and actually adapting to higher education without closing campuses. And the economic impact on these communities is in the millions, plural. Richland Center, seven to eight million dollar impact. And Republicans say, well, here's a couple of million to help you out. 844-967-2789. Let's go to Mike in Kenosha. Mike, thanks for holding. What say you? Yeah, thanks for taking my call. I appreciate it very much. I just want to remind uh, both yourself and uh, the audience that these austerity um, um, I don't know, practices that you know they, they, the right-wingers continuously throw at us has basically been all around our infrastructure, whether it's uh, education infrastructure, whether it's democracy infrastructure, whether it's roads and bridges and broadband and everything else. You know, they are shrinking a government to the size that were small enough to drown in the bathtub. We've heard them say that over and over. So it's nothing new. It's It breaks my heart because just about every dollar that you spend in infrastructure, you get a dollar and a half or more back. Um, it is something, especially in a two-year school, specifically in this case, mm. uh, that is a much-needed uh, uh, step in between uh, high school and uh, college. Yeah. And quite frankly, it fits like a glove in a lot of these smaller markets. And, and here's, um, but here's, and I, I agree with you, Mike, as a, as a former Republican, I saw this, you're right. There's been an attack on funding for higher education and infrastructure for Republicans for years. It preceded Tony Evers. But my question is, why is Tony Evers not speaking out about this in a stronger way instead of going along with it? And where is all of the, of the anger and angst from the progressive Democrats in the legislature who went apoplectic over DEI, which I was right there with them. But on this, when it affects mostly rural Wisconsin, they are silent as a stone. Our politics, unfortunately, have uh, degraded to the point where instead of being uh, bold and assertive and confident when you're saying a position, you almost have to be guarded and you know, look around you and see who's listening because of the attacks uh, that are eminent mm-hmm. uh, from uh, the opposition. When, when, when our system of democracy um, is shunning uh, public servants mm-hmm. and embracing self-servants, we need to pivot and we need to pivot quickly. And, and uh, so I, that's my response to yeah. your specific question. But I Thanks. just want to remind people whether it's roads and bridges, whether it's education, whether it's, I mean, name it. Mm. Uh, they've been in the star of the beast mode for a long time, and that's not going to be changing until they are removed from office. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. Appreciate it. Mike and Kenosha, 844-967-2789. Let's go up north to one of the great cities that has a four-year campus, UW Eau Claire. Gene and Eau Claire, thanks for calling. What say you? I want to add some more issues to that list that uh, 
people, Democrats primarily, are working with right now, especially the governor, and that's the health care crisis on our side of the state. With two major hospitals closing down within a couple months, um, a big clinic operation closing down, just found out the day they were going to close with no heads up. None of our representatives or governor or anybody knew anything about it, and that's a major crisis because um, Chippewa Falls is losing its hospital and um, some health care clinics that was associated with the hospital that just had expanded, and, and due to funding and due to, you know, Republicans not giving Medicaid funds, it also comes in with it, COVID, the COVID, and it also one of the facilities, well, they were all hacked, and mm-hmm. there was a while they couldn't even get their medical records. So there's a lot of stuff going on, and believe you me, I support the universities, but they got everybody strung out, women's issues, abortion issues. Uh, um, I, you know, I, I, appreciate, it's, it's, I appreciate your comments, as always, Gene. I, I agree with you. This, this hospital crisis is a huge thing. We're going to spend more time on this. No, Pat Kreitlow has as well. But, I mean, don't, don't you think that the governor and Democrats have some responsibility to speak out on this at least and not just roll over and go along with it? What, what can he do? I mean, look at they're, they're doing the redistricting and he's involved in that. I don't know how the people that are leaders, like the, our governor, with all of the attacks on every single um, structure that we have. It's unbelievable. I mean, I've got, I'm kid, not kidding you, I have notebooks full of all of the things that these people are dealing with. They're attacking <laughs> left and right on all of the things that all the taxpayers um, Gene, I'm, 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 I'm up against, I always appreciate it. I'm up against the clock right now. We've got to run more on the other side. Lee, don't go anywhere. We'll take your call on the other side. It's the Tolerable Show on the Civic Media Radio Network. wherever it may lead, and having fun doing it. Welcome back to the Tile Ball Show on the Civic Media Radio Network. It is February 1st, 2024, Thursday, Groundhog Eve, Mr. Zommers. Tomorrow is one of my favorite holidays, Groundhog Day. And unfortunately, you won't be here to celebrate. I won't be. Uh, Trivi Olson's going to be uh, uh, guest hosting tomorrow, but we'll, ha- we'll have some Groundhog news before the show is over. Right now, talking about uh, issues coming back over and over like Groundhog Day, This issue of the two-year campuses of the University of Wisconsin system, we are now at four that have been closed or in the process thereof. Richland, Washington County, Fond du Lac, and Marinette. And today, the governor of the state of Wisconsin, Tony Evers, three times elected state school superintendent of public schools, had this to say. I anticipate there will be more two-year campuses uh, uh, closed down. It's going to be painful, though. I, and I think Jay and the Board of Regents are doing the best job possible. Jay Rothman, the president of the University of Wisconsin system, the Board of Regents are doing the best job possible. As Mr. Zomer said, he might be telling the truth. They might not be possible of doing any better. I, I just think this is atrocious. And again, I'm thankful Governor Evers is our governor. I'm a supporter of him. But on this one, he's, he's, he's getting it wrong. And where are the Democrats? Where are all of the liberal progressive Democrats who scream bloody murder when it's an issue they care about in higher ed, but so far silent on the dismantling of the Wisconsin idea, which is that the borders of our state are the borders of our university. 844-967-2789, 844-967-2789. Lee, back in Richland County in Yuba. Appreciate you holding on, Lee. What say you? Well, first off, I want to tell you how much I love your show and all the topics that you bring up that are really pertinent. And I totally agree that Evers ought to get off uh, his neutral position and really fight for... Uh, furthering education in this state. You're talking about the Wisconsin idea, and boy, that's you know that's something we're really missing. 
and I'm sorry that the Republicans in the past have wanted to privatize everything because they're they're really putting all of our educational systems in, in jeopardy. Yeah. And they're they're providing monies for uh parochial and uh, private schools and uh, that's 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 wrong. It's yeah. just flat out wrong and Evers ought to speak up, Evers ought to fight for this. I don't think the Board of Regents are doing their job. They're not doing it properly. Uh, I miss the progressive days. But anyways, yeah. I thank you so much for what, you, what you're what you bringing up. And uh, unless you've got a question for me, I'm going to hang up. Well, I, I appreciate the comments, first of all. But real, just quickly before you, you're in Richland County, Yuba, a great little burg in Richland County. Just tell folks in your own words, living there, what the closure of the Richland campus means for the community, in your words. It means an awful lot to the community. I've gone to a number of these sessions with Mark Klein, and of course, all they ever have are listening sessions. They never will say much except for maybe a couple comments. They pr- you know, pretend to kind of scribble some words down, but uh, the campus was kind of the gem of this community. Uh, a lot of our youth would remain here for two years and you know, we're able to save up money and live at home and do things here locally. But right now, they're they're forced to leave this community. And uh, I, as an elder at this point, I'm 80 years old and I'm a former educator. Uh, you know, my wife and I enjoyed taking classes there. Mm-hmm. Uh, they offered adult classes. They offered classes for youth. They had uh, theater there. They had various groups and committees that would meet there. And it was it, it was kind of a central spot to the entire community. And now that we've lost it and others are going to lose it as well, I think this is a travesty. This is something that, you know, with the, with the billions of dollars we've got left over, you know, these guys are just really misusing our money. Yeah. And uh, so I, I, the community suffers tremendously from this loss. And now we're stuck with a building. And we're stuck with a contract that they wiggle their way out of, you know, so we're, we're going to suffer financially again. And our school district here is looking for a $27 million uh, agreement with the community to, to raise money for repairs and stuff for the schools. And, you know, these, these Republicans, uh, Mark line are just sitting on this money when there's so much that could be done that they just, these guys are just, brainless twits. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better, Lee. You nailed it. Thank you so much. Lee in Yuba in Richland County. He's right. And again, it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm going after, you know, the Democrats a little bit here because I think they deserve it, but the Republicans are not without fault by a long shot. They're the ones that haven't been funding it. We, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for the lack of funding from, from Republican legislatures. And, and, and as, as Lee pointed out, Howard Markline, who I was in the room when he addressed over 100 people in Richland County, and they said, please give us a couple of million, three million to save our campus, to keep it going. Well, he said, he said, quote, there's just no money. There's just no money, unquote. And now they have money, $2 million per per community to close the campuses. All right? The money is there. It is a choice not to use it to support public higher education. 844-967-2789. Quickly on the text line first, Mary listening in Mount Horeb says, I just left a message stating my concern about our higher ed in our state with my representative, Diane Hesselbein. Is there a way we can get a civic media campaign going to contact Governor Evers? What would be a good phone number, email to reach him? Mr. Zomers, I know you have a public number you'll look up and you can pass on to us. I, I'll find the phone number. For now, what I do have, um, I don't believe there's just an email address you can get through his website, but if you go to evers.wi.gov, so E-V-E-R-S dot W-I dot G-O-V, and you click on connect, there's a tab for voice your opinion, and then it has you put in you know, your name, phone number, your address, so they know you're really a Wisconsinite, uh, and then what your opinions to share with Evers are. So right. you can at least send them an email-ish message that yeah. way. And I would just encourage as a former staffer, you know, be positive. You could oh, say, yeah, be look, polite. Up, yeah, be polite. Don't don't call names and and just say, you know, whatever. Just say, look, this is why we should save this. 
Please get engaged. Please defend this. 844-967-2789. Let's go to Bill listening in Oconomowoc. Bill, thanks for listening. What say you? I can't believe uh, the other gentleman said it right. These twits that will not move a muscle to give us our taxpayer money that they're hoarding in this surplus they talk about. That's our money, not their money. Our money goes for public interest. Public education is number one in public interest. You can't have a great community if you don't fund public education. But here's where they could step on those twits toes. We have to stop giving any public money to private schools, because if that continues, then they have to drop their tax-free status. Mm -hmm. Taxpayers cannot afford in this state to uh, fund public or private education. That's just insanity. And if nobody wants to take the ball and run with it, I think the last uh, text that you just talked about, we could create something right through civic media to go to the governor and say, look, here's what you have to do. Not what you want to do. You have to. He is a big proponent for public education. Yes. I know he is. I know he is, too. He has the ability. He has the ability and the leverage to leverage these people and say, if you don't work with me, I'll make it a, 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 a governor uh, edict that we temporarily our public education is in dire straits due to Scott Walker and the way he gutted the institutions. We're going to have to hold you people accountable and the money has to come back in. That's your only alternative, Mm -hmm. which really isn't an alternative. It's a way of getting it done. Thanks for letting me vet my spleen. Hey, always a pleasure, Bill. Thanks for listening down there in beautiful Oconomowoc. 844-967-2789. And we do have that phone number. So if you want to email uh, the governor's office, again, evers.wi.gov and click on connect and voice your opinion. Otherwise, for a phone number, you can call their office at 608-266-1212. That's 608-266-1212. Thank you, Mr. Zombers, as always, for the fine work. Let's go back to the phone lines, 844-967-2789. Tony, listening in in beautiful Wisconsin Rapids at WFHR up there in beautiful Rapids. Tony, thanks for listening in. What say you? Hi, boy. I have... haven't had a chance to listen to your whole show just because of work, but the last two callers really nailed it on the head. And with that last interview, I heard an excerpt with Evers saying something along the lines of the border regents are doing an excellent job. I about slammed on my brakes and just was so infuriated, <laughs> right? Especially with, well, and I have two teenage, one of them's graduating this spring high school, and I've been doing nothing but encouraging at least two years of college, local, you know, Mm -hmm. or a trade or whatever. And these opportunities are diminishing and it's, it's just infuriating and maddening. Not everybody's built for four years, four years at UW or whatever. It's just a great, great loss. And all these opportunities and chances are being ripped away from our children. Yeah. Tony, I could not alone the communities and everything else. I couldn't agree more. I really appreciate listening up there, Wisconsin Rapids. Uh, have a good day, and uh, you know, don't, don't be too upset. Drive safely. But don't slam the brakes on too hard there. But uh, appreciate listening. Our great station up there, WFHR, in the middle of the state in Wisconsin Rapids. Tony brings up a great point, and I've said this before. I'll say it again, that our two-year UW public schools are not just a great deal for the students. If they're a younger person, probably the parents are helping pay this. So the student might be able to live at home or in a a cheaper housing than Madison or La Crosse or or Green Bay or Milwaukee. And it's more affordable for it's if it's a returning student. If it's a, a person who's been out in the workforce for a while and wants to return to get or finish their degree, the two year colleges are also a great deal for them. It's cheaper to to get your education there. It's still a high quality, but financially cheaper. But here's the thing. Our two-year colleges are also a great deal for the University of Wisconsin system and the Wisconsin taxpayer. The number of staff at our two-year campuses across the state is much, much, much smaller. And the payroll, much, much, much smaller than at our four years. 
And at most of these two-year, a lot of people don't know this, at most of the two-year campuses, it is a joint venture between the state of Wisconsin and the county, all right? The county actually owns the buildings and does most of the maintenance. That comes off the local county tax roll. The, the professors, the staff, the books, the heat, that sort of thing, that's paid for by the system. So when you when you're at the state building commission, the legislature and the governor, and, and they, they oversee a lot of the infrastructure, most of the two years, that's not handled by UW system, you know, or, or tax money. That's a local county thing. So not only are the two-year campuses a great deal for those paying for an education, they're a great deal for the taxpayer as well. And the fact that Jay Rothman and the Board of Regents are not talking about this, the fact that they're sitting on the ivory tower of the 17th floor of Van Nuys in Madison looking down on us like Yertle the Turtle is atrocious. And they are, they are breaking the trust of the public. The University of Wisconsin system is a public university. But yet they don't want to go out and talk to the public or listen to the public before they make these life-altering changes to our communities across Wisconsin. And now the governor of Wisconsin is on the record as saying there's more to come. We'll keep following this. Appreciate your phone calls as well. 844-967-2789. 844-967-2789. Back on the other side. This is the Town Hall Ball Show. And this is the Civic Media Radio Network. My bills are all due, and the babies need shoes, but I'm busted. Cotton is down to a quarter a pound, and I'm busted. I got a cow that went dry, and a hen that won't lay. A big stack of bills that get bigger each day. The county will haul my belongings away. I'm busted. Welcome back to the Town Hall Bowl Show on the Civic Media Ready Network. Nine now before the hour of one o'clock, Mr. Zomers. I'm always up for some Johnny Cash, but you know, just the, the finances are busted. Is there's, it? there's just no money. Oh, we no just money. can't pay for it. We're busted. <laughs> we we definitely don't have a four billion dollar surplus. Don't right. look at that. Right. You would think for he likes to brag about. Howard Markline, the co-chair of the Joint Finance Committee. Repub Being a Repub CPA. He's a CPA. He likes to tell people he's a CPA. You Because know? that means he's smart. So don't let him <laughs> fool you when he says, I just can't do anything. He's a CPA and he, he enjoys a good trophy wife. So, I mean, but, but I guess that's Howard Markline for you. Anyway, uh, we'll keep following this. And, and by the way, just to put a button on the governor saying there's going to be more closures of two-year campuses. If you don't think that this could visit your community, whether you're a two or four year campus, think again. Think again. Every public university in this state is potentially on the chopping block with the exception of UW Madison and maybe UW Milwaukee. The rest are fair game. You heard it here first. Moving on, the Republican National Committee. Of course, many of you know, if you're a regular listener to this show, I am a former Republican in the party for almost 30 years, left in 2011 over voter rights issues, voter suppression issues. But I still, you know, I'm I, I familiar. I was a large part of it for a long time. And here now, the receipts have been released this morning, at least in part, the Republican National Committee is essentially broke. <laughs> Very good. I like that. I'm not making this up. They are in bad shape right now when it comes to their finances. 
And this is not new news to, to some people, by the way. But the Republican Party is not doing well at all. It dates back, let's look at this Newsweek article from December 21st of last year. So just over almost, uh, just, just over a month ago. Headline, Republicans are running out of money. The amount of money that the Republican National Committee, RNC, had on hand for spending at the end of November was the lowest bank balance it has had at that point in any year since 2016, according to disclosures of the Federal Election Commission, FEC. A filing on Wednesday, the GOP governing body revealed it had $9.9 million to spend as of November 30th, which is less than half of what it had to work with when Donald Trump was contesting for his first presidential election. So I just want to set that up that this is, you know, this is what the numbers today are not necessarily new here. All right. So today, the the new numbers come out here, and it, it ain't good. The receipts and ending cash on hand figures for the RNC for January of 2016 to December of 2023, they they were those were released, and they've only gone down. They've gotten worse. All right, as time has gone on. And you've heard me talk about this before if you're a regular listener. In politics, if you're a candidate, particularly for Congress or president, there are two numbers that contributors or potential contributors want to know. One, what are your poll numbers? Two, what is your COH, which stands for cash on hand? Not how much you raised, but how much you have cash on hand. The Republican National Committee's year-ending filing reveals it had the worst fundraising year since 2013 in absolute dollars, and it's worst since 1993 if you account for inflation-adjusted figures. The Republican Party of National Committee, now you think, well, this sounds not too bad. It raised $87.2 million. RNC raised $87.2 million, but it spent $93.5 million and had just over $8 million cash on hand with $1.8 million in debt. Now, what do we hear from Republicans? We have to run our country like we run our, our, our checkbooks. Kitchen table economy. You can't spend... More than you bring in. Favorite line of Republicans. Their national committee raised $87.2 million and it spent $93.5. Now look, I am not great at math. But I can tell you $93.5 million is more than $87.2 million. The Republican Party is in trouble, you guys. They are in trouble in terms of, of their numbers. They're in trouble of the money that they're raising or not raising. And let me just go down through, because I I have these in front of me, the cash on hand balance. I got to, because my old aging eyes here, I got to pick this computer up and get it even closer because it's very fine print. And these are, these are our numbers that the Republican National Committee filed with the the FEC, Federal Election Committee. So right now they're at eight, a little over $8 million cash on hand. Last year at this time, it was almost 10. The year before that, nine, nine. You have to go all the way down until, let's just pick a year here, uh, 07. 07, they finished at 33 million cash on hand. When you go down there, there was a a point where the Republican Party had $70 million, seven zero cash on hand back in 2021. They have continued to fall and falter. And it looks like, geez, when you attack women's health care rights, when you attack LGBTQ's people, people to live, <laughs> it doesn't bode well. And people say, well, Joe Biden's in trouble. It's working fine. Trump's going to be reelected. I've told you this before. I don't watch a lot of Fox News. 
But here's something that might surprise some of you. Fox News polling is a kind of a separate entity over there, and they usually get it just about right. The Fox News poll people are have a new poll out today. A hypothetical 2024 election matchup. In December, it was Biden 47, Trump 46. What is it now? We'll tell you on the other side. You don't want to miss it. It's the Todd Ball Show on the Civic Media Radio Network.